Hey guys, I want to finish this little project up real quick. I wanted to just talk about a few things that you kind of need to know. I hope everybody uh, watches the whole series on this if you're going to attempt to do this. Uh, watches the whole thing first because there's some things I learned along the way that I need to tell you about. Uh, first of all, let's take a look at this wiring over here. And when I was talking to you earlier about this wiring, this red wiring here, I kind of said some things that were erroneous, not really, but I didn't really know what I was looking at. Um, it's real simple. Coming out of this plug here from the rest of the harness, you see here you've got a, uh, you've got a red wire. I think there's a mouse in this hood. If it jumps out at me and I scream, <laughs> you know, you got a red wire there, you got a tan, you got a kind of orange, you got a green, you got a big black one. Well, I can tell you what those are. The, the big black one, that's your, to your alternator, that's your, uh, right there where that plug is, that's your B plus. That, light, that wire is always hot whenever the battery is connected. And then the uh, green wire is one of your field terminals to the alternator. The orange wire is the temperature sender wire. The tan one is your oil pressure. And the red one is the one we're dealing with over here. And what, it, what happens is this red wire originally goes into a welded splice, which is this thing here. And it's about kind of right over here, but it's buried in that harness. When you have that lean burn harness out in front of you, it's kind of buried in there. And the reason being is this wire does about three or four different functions. It supplies ignition on power to a few things I'll just tell you about. Um, of course, it uh, provides power to the lean burn computer. It provides power to one of the field terminals on the alternator. It provides power to um, the choke through the uh, oil pressure switch and that kind of stuff. So, and then of course I'm using it to provide power to my ignition system over here. So the thing is, what you got to have left after you start parsing these wires out is you got the red wire coming from up there. It comes along and it comes to about right here. And then you have another red wire that goes to the alternator. And then you have one which is, I've left kind of loose, which is, well, it's taped up. But right here, that's one goes to the choke heater for the oil pressure switch. And I'm not going to use that because I don't even have a choke right now. I can't find one. So what you're going to have left is you're going to have three wires right here. And I soldered them with an extension, soldered an extension onto it. And I'm using that to power my coil and I put some heat shrink over it and I've got some conduit I'm also gonna put on it there too to keep it nice and safe and I will wrap this part here up also um, so it's pretty simple you just have to know what these wires do I think I kinda might have made it harder to understand than it, than it really was previously but that's all you got you just gotta have, uh, have that set up like that and it should just run fine and something to mention about this distributor down here before you put it in uh, the the lean burn and the old original electronic non lean burn with a vacuum can on it distributor which is what I'm using down there I can't really see it but there's the vacuum can on the side of it they have a different the slot that the bolt goes in the hold down bolt goes in which is like way right there you see it peeking out down there that slot is smaller on the old non lean burn distributor so you need to take your bolt and open that thing up some try to do it evenly so it'll rotate the full length of that slot so you can do your timing adjustment so I had to take the distributor back out and do that it was not fun and let's see what else also on the timing on these things for whatever reason your timing can't really see it. I don't have my light out here, but take my word for it. The the timing tab you can just barely see it is right there, and it's just got you know 30, 20, 10, and zero top dead center on it. But that stupid balancer has got three marks on it, a third of the way around. Each of each of them's a third of the way around, so that confused the crap out of me at first, and then. I notice that one of the marks is a lot longer than the other, so that's actually the top dead center mark. That's that's when number one cylinder is on top dead center. And if somebody said the other two marks are just so you can time each cylinder on top dead center. I don't even know what that's for. Why would you? 
said anyway what I did was to make sure I was right about that is I took the oil cap off and when you take the oil cap off you can see the rocker arms with the first two cylinders on a slant six you can just barely see them look down in there in the light and you line them up you got two right here you line them up with the ports you see there's your intake port and there's the exhaust port and what I did is I by hand I rotated this engine around with it in neutral and watched until I saw this intake valve open up and then it started closing again and right after it started closing again on number one cylinder I watched my mark down there and sure enough there come that big long mark right up to top so I put it right on top of the center and that was absolutely correct that's what you do because um, your your piston for each cylinder comes up to top dead center two times per uh, cycle on a four cycle engine you got one uh, is your compression stroke, which is one of the spark plug fires, and then the other one when it comes up is pushes your exhaust valve open and it pushes the exhaust gases out. So you can get kind of messed up on that. So just remember that your your compression stroke at top dead center is going to be right after the intake valve opens and closes for that particular cylinder, always. So just remember that. Keep that in mind. But I did check the spark plugs, and they are somebody had already gapped them to like 45 thousandths. They're supposed to be on 35 thousandths, but <laughs> you yeah, know, whatever. So I didn't have to even mess with that. I checked a couple of them, and they were all the same. So we're just going to go with that. And what else? Uh, try to think of anything else to tell you. You know, it's a real nice setup here because this, this I mean, it may not, maybe you don't quite see why I did this but the whole ignition system of this truck besides the distributor is right here on this bracket and take the whole thing off and you know what five minutes four minutes just two bolts to hold the bracket on and then take the wiring connectors off and that's it I'm done it's off I don't have all that wiring going over to the box and I don't have a ballast resistor with wiring going to it you know I've just eliminated a lot of headaches with this and like I said, I may come back and put a new distributor in eventually because the vacuum advance is not working on this one. I don't even have it hooked up. It's, uh, I think it's that line right there. It's got a screw in the end of it. You can't really see it, but it's there. And it'll run a little bit better even with the vacuum advance hooked up. So, so yeah, uh, that should cover it, guys. If you got any questions, please be sure to ask me and I'll do my best to answer them. And the nice thing about this is, if, like I said, I've been kind of mentioning around, I said I may swap engines. I don't, I don't know, I may, but I got a 318 in there. But if I do, this ignition system it just works just exactly the same. The only thing I'll have to do at all is just to get a longer coil wire. That's it. Works exactly the same. And I might have to extend a couple wires, but that's it. No big deal. It's a real nice setup. And the beauty of this is that this can work on any vehicle. It can work on the older model Fords, it can work on AMCs, it can work on any kind of stuff that didn't, you know, it's got that box over there and didn't have a GM HEI ignition system already or a Ford Duras, well, there's different Ford ignition systems, but the, the Duraspark is the one that's got the box on the, on the uh, fender well. And there's nothing wrong with those boxes, you know, they work pretty good, except these are a lot stronger ignition system for one i think i was testing the spark i had a plug wire over somewhere and man i think that dog on screwdriver I had stuck in it was a good half inch away from the metal and i cranked this thing over and it went pop and jumped the spark so jumped the gap and yeah so it's a good upgrade it's real simple i've been wanting to do this so all right guys i'm gonna uh, wrap this up. I think I'm going to get some gas. Go get some gas for this thing. I don't know how low on gas it is because, <laughs> be honest with you, I'm not driving it much and the gas gauge doesn't work. So I better go get some gas for it. I'm going to put some gas in. We'll take this thing for a spin. How about that? See you around, guys. Talk to you soon.